Hi, welcome to Tiger and Cat channel. Today we are going to learn about experiment 4, Charles Law and the Ideal Guest Law. The objective of this experiment is to verify Charles Law and to determine the molar mass of a volatile liquid. And have a short at recap. The bottom. Don't forget, align the end of the gas column with the zero mark of the ruler. Place the bulb of thermometer approximately halfway up the column of trapped gas. Okay, done! Place the charge law apparatus inside 250ml measuring cylinder. Fill the measuring cylinder with tap water. Unfill the gas column inside the tube is totally immersed. of the trapped gas equals to the surrounding which is the tap water. Record the temperature. And measure the height of the gas column. The height of the gas column is measured from the seal end to the bottom of the mercury plug. By using the same charge law apparatus, repeat step 2 to 4, replace the tap water with warm water with a temperature between 40 to 50 degrees Celsius, a mixture of ice and water, a mixture of ice and 5 ml of methanol. Don't forget to wash and rinse the charge. This virtual experiment is using simulation from educational website PHET. And teacher will demonstrate the simulation with you all. Then student can try by your own and take the value of this simulation. A set of guidelines will be given. You just follow and investigate this problem. This simulation is taken from PHET education platform. First, we need to add reset the simulation. Next, temperature set to degrees Celsius. Charles Law is the study between the volume and temperature at constant pressure and fixed amount of particles. So now we take the width as the volume. Now introduce light particles to this chamber. We take the whole constant pressure, then we can start to play around this simulation. First, we try to check the width at room temperature. Remember, change the nanometer into cm meter, cm centimeter. Now we try to cool down the system. Okay. Okay, to find degrees Celsius, what is the width? And then we lower again. Okay, make it become negative 24 degrees Celsius. What is the width? Okay, then we choose another tool set which it has higher. Temperature, okay. okay, 57, what is the width, okay, so like this you play around and take roughly around 5 set data in order to help you to plot the graph. 
Okay, you can jot down the temperature and volume based on the simulation. You can take around six sets of data. You plot the graph by using the width against temperature and then temperature in degrees Celsius on the graph paper. Based on the graph, state the relationship between volume and temperature. And then try to extrapolate the line until the width equal to zero to obtain the absolute zero temperature. In 1787, French scientist Jacques Charles observed that a fixed quantity of gas under a constant pressure changes its volume with the temperature. When the gas was heated, the volume increased. When it was cooled, the volume decreased. The graphs illustrating this relationship were straight lines. Extension of these lines to lower temperatures made them all cross at one point. At zero volume, and a temperature of minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Of course, gases do not ever reach zero volume upon cooling, since they change to liquids and then to solids before reaching that temperature. The temperature minus 273.15 degrees Celsius is called absolute zero and is the basis of the absolute temperature scale, where the temperature is measured in Kelvin, we have already shown how to convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin. The volume-temperature relationship is known as Charles's law. For a fixed amount of gas at a constant pressure, the volume of the gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. This relationship can be expressed in the form of a graph by proportion or equations. We can see from the latter that the quotient V divided by T always equals the same constant for a given amount of gas at constant pressure. This means that knowing the temperature T1 and the volume V1 of gas, we can calculate its volume for any other temperature. Notice that doubling the absolute temperature doubles the gas volume. Next, part B, the ideal gas law. So this part you need to calculate the molar mass of the unknown liquid based on the below data. So you just follow the data and then try to apply the formula PV equal to NRT to find out the molar mass. Okay, let's check. For this part, we are going to apply the ideal gas equation. As we know, right, ideal gas equation is from three gases law, which is which are Boyce law, Charles law, and Avogadro law. So, and then you notice volume is directly proportional to temperature and number of mole and inversely proportional to pressure. So, PV is directly proportional to NT. Based on here, right, okay, we, uh, we're adding the uh, directly proportional constant, which is R, with the value 8.314 Joule per Kelvin per mole or 0 0.08206 liter SCM per Kelvin per mole. Okay, from this PV equal to NRT. Okay, we can use to determine the density, molar mass, temperature, pressure of a gas. Always remember this is ideal gas equation. So gas which obeys all gas equation. So and then must be my that PVRT must be correct unit. Uh. So let's check how the PV and RT can help us to find the density, molar mass, and others. So based on PV and RT, right? Actually, we can find the density and molar mass. Okay. So first of all, we must know. Okay. Actually. Number of mole is equal to mass over molar mass. So we try to replace, substitute this equation over here. So mass over molar mass times V equal to P over RT. And then what we want is molar mass. Okay, so you try to put a mathematical way, pull P MR over here, V remain the same over here, MRT over V. And then now MR equal to Okay, and then put over here mathematically, so MR equal to MRT over PV. So mass times R times C over PV, you can find the molar mass. So you try to apply this formula of MR in order to help you find the molar mass of the unknown gases. Okay, so last is you have to write down the conclusion. Charles' law volume of a fixed mass of a given gas is proportional to, so it's directly or inversely. Okay, next, based on your calculation, what is the molar mass of the unknown gas? And then try to predict 
the compound of unknown gas based on the molar mass that you found. So for this experiment, right, what you need to do is just write out the title, objective, result. So based on the result, you have to plot the graph for part A and then perform the calculation for part B. And then you just do the simple discussion based on the instruction and then write out the conclusion and reference. After that, turn in through Google Classroom. Hope you all enjoyed this lesson. Thank you.